Hey, folks, I'm talking to Tom Klingenstein. He's uh, with the Claremont Institute. Uh, and Tom, I just love the fact that you're here in New York, I'm here in New York, and we're both advocating for America. Uh, it's, uh, it's a little bit ironic. Most uh, people think that everyone in New York would be uh, pro-Governor Cuomo, uh, pro-Mayor de Blasio. But funnily enough, we're anti-communists. So uh, I want to ask you, you said something that really what the left is trying to do is trying to convince everyone uh, that we're racist, that we're systemically racist. That means Kamala Harris's husband, who's a white man who's been kept off the campaign trail because that's not a good optic, that he is systemically racist. Obviously, Barack Obama's mother, who was white, is systemically racist. They're trying to convince us of this. And many people have a nascent sense of guilt about everything. And so they're perfectly willing to go along uh, with that. Is, is that really where we are? I, I think it is. But I also think it plays into America's profound sense of fairness, right? It resonates with America, this charge of racism, which then gives rise to guilt. But what Americans have to understand um, is this is the strategy of the left. If they can convince us that we're racist, then we will accede to their policy agenda. And so what that means is Republicans have to stand up. They have to speak out. And they have to say, no, America is not racist, period. As I said before, this is not to say there isn't some racism. Obviously, there's racism, always will be not to say there aren't some races, but at this moment, this is the time to categorically, I think, assert that America is not racist. And at the same time, at the same time, they need to figure out a way to say that Black Lives Matter, the organization, is racist. You can't say it, but you have to say it. Because remember, what political correctness is, is a prohibition on objecting to anti-racism, right? You can't object, right? You can't defend America. Well, you, if, if you can't speak up, you can't defend uh, America. And so you have to take on at this moment, I think, Black Lives Matter. You have to say to Black Lives Matter something like, absolutely black lives matter. They just don't matter to you. You don't care about George Floyd. You don't care about the police. You don't care about the businesses that have been destroyed, the blacks that you have killed because the police have backed off. Those, are, those blacks are all abstractions, right? Those are a prop for their agenda. They're just here. You're just here. I think you ought to speak directly to them. You're here for destruction. You're not here for black lives. You're not here for any lives. You have to delegitimize, I think, Black Lives Matter. And oh, absolutely. Then absolutely. Look, there, there are evangelical churches that have been duped horribly uh, into somehow believing that Black Lives Matter is vaguely positive or very positive. I have said just what you said. They're one of the most wicked, cynical, anti-God, anti-Christian, anti-Jewish, and even anti-black organizations that has ever existed on the planet. If they could have murdered George Floyd, I'm convinced they're all about power. They couldn't care less about the life of George Floyd. And the reason for that is because they are athe atheists and Marxists, they don't even have the grounding to say that we're all made in God's image, all lives are sacred. It's pure power. Uh, it's it's postmodern. It's uh, you know all the stuff that that basically says there is no ground of all being. We only care about power. That's who they are. But what horrifies me is that many decent people, people of faith, have been completely uh, hornswoggled by BLM. And I think that we are, as you said, compelled to denounce them as wicked, as frauds, as enemies of everything good in American culture. And that, and I think um, we've been fooled in large measure because our leaders are not speaking up, right? People need to hear their beliefs, sometimes unformed, 
not fully articulated beliefs. They need those expressed in the public square. Otherwise, they don't think their beliefs are, sh are shared. Even President Trump is reluctant, and I understand why, to call BLM racist. But I think and I have, uh, you know, politician friends who disagree, but I think the politicians have to take on BLM because BLM has the moral authority at this moment, and that moral authority has to be destroyed. Well, uh, I, I couldn't agree more, and I'm thrilled for you uh, and for the Claremont Institute because uh, because you exist and, and you're vocalizing things. I know that you don't speak exactly for the Claremont Institute, but it, it, it really, it requires courage. Uh, and I find, and I know you find that, that many folks in public life don't have courage. It, it takes genuine courage to be even willing to see these things, much less give them voice. Uh, and I'm horrified at people, particularly in corporate America, who have gone along with this. We've just got a minute or so left. Can you address that? Why would corporate America be as deeply craven as they have been? Well, I mean, you know, it's two reasons, I think. They, you know, they need to buy off the left. But I think even more, um, you know, these are our cultural elites. They have embraced diversity or what we're now calling anti-racism. They believe in this stuff. The only place where we have people who don't believe in this stuff is in politics. And, but our politicians are not speaking up. At other times, you know, we would have had people in our cultural institutions or business that rejected, like they rejected communism. Right. But those places right. have all been taken over. The only place to fight the culture wars is politics, and our politics are not uh, fighting them. And you're absolutely right about Black Lives Matter being anti-Christian. At its core, remember, Christianity supports the American way of life. We got to destroy it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's that's where we are. Now, if people want to find you, what's the best place for people to find you online? Americaisgood.us. Americaisgood.us. And they'll see my speeches, written work. All right. Uh, we're going we're gonna to have to leave it there. Tom uh, uh, Klingenstein, uh, a privilege to get this time with you. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Eric. Appreciate it.